Vladimir Putin. Part 2. We continue our examination of the Russian president by understanding more of the early stage of his life and his involvement in the KGB. A further detailed source of information to our sister understanding of him comes from a gentleman named Artyom Kruglov. Since 2015, Kruglov has run a website called Putinism As It Is, which attempts to document the hidden pages of the strongman's biography, from his youth in Soviet Leningrad to his early days in the KGB, to his purported ties with notorious Russian organized crime structures. For five years, Kruglov has picked through the memoirs and interviews of police investigators, security service agents, members of organized crime gangs, and others, to piece together the story of how a young tough rose to become the dominant figure in Russia's modern history. This information often enables him to read between the lines of Putin's official biographies, including in the first person, written in 2000, in Oleg Blotsky's two-volume 2001 authorised biography, Putin, The Story of a Life. If you take everything that Blotsky collected, it emerges that Putin is a person with a lot of complexes, Kruglov said. He's embarrassed by his origins. It's worth pointing out that he actually is not embarrassed by his origins, but his origins are a threat to control because they are a potent reminder of weakness. He grew up in an antisocial, anti-human environment in a criminal world on the fringes of the Nekrasov market, which was one of the most criminalised parts of the entire city of Leningrad. There he was picked on and beaten. Again, confirmation of the lack of control environment and an exposure to a particular way of life that shaped him. Putin, Kruglov emphasised, was a product of post-war Soviet Leningrad. His internal bestiality comes from such a childhood, he added, and it was intensified by his years in the KGB. Lack of control environment confirmed once again, creation of a defence mechanism which then harnesses the KGB as part of its further weaponization of that defence mechanism. Kruglov draws particular attention to Leonid Yusyatsov, who was Putin's first martial arts coach in the 1960s. Yusyatsov was also coaching Arkady Rotenberg, who remains one of Putin's closest confidants and one of, Richard's, one of Russia's richest oligarchs. Yusyatsov a criminal recidivist who spent 20 years in Soviet prisons was, Kruglov said, a criminal authority known as Leonya the Sportsman. He was essentially a second father for Putin and Rotenberg, Kruglov said, noting that Putin refers respectively to Zyatsov several times in the In the First biography. Assertion of control by compliment. Yusatsov was a Jew who ripped off other Jews who were emigrating to Israel and had to sell their possessions, Kruglov said. That was his criminal speciality. Likely a narcissist imposing his own manipulations and worldview on Vladimir Pyotin, whose own defence mechanism identified that these teachings could be harnessed and utilised for further enhancement, suggesting potential awareness. However, he used his sports world connections to get Rotenberg admitted to the Leningrad Institute of Sport and Putin into Leningrad State University. Putin's 15-year career in the KGB, 1975 to 1990, really formed him as a person, Kruglov added. It appears to me, however, that whilst it would be seen that it really formed him as a person, what was actually going on was that his personality had been formed by this point, and his personality was using the KGB, in effect, to extend its reach, to improve itself in terms of effectiveness, bolting this on by way of character trait acquisition and a residual benefit to enable it to pursue potentially the prime aims. Putin has always said he performed unspecified counterintelligence work, vagueness, assertion of control through secrecy. He has also said he was a specialist in communicating with people, assertion of control through communication. Positively, 
possibly cognitive reading of individuals allowing understanding of how they tick to aid in the pursuit of the prime aims. Certainly, it is the case that this view that Putin had this ability to read people is something that has been supported from evidence elsewhere. There was explanations about an early meeting that took place when a particular person who was the great-granddaughter of Khrushchev met Vladimir Putin. And in 1999, she explained that Putin kissed the hands of the women that he was meeting in a charming yet old-fashioned manner. <clears throat> when he came to meet Nina, who's the great-granddaughter of Nikita Khrushchev, he didn't kiss her hand, but realising that she was from the United States, shook her hand instead. Nina explained that it was very clear from her dealings with him that he could figure out his audience very quickly. She explained that he could see straight through you and know how you tick and then play on that. That recollection from her 1999 meeting also supports the fact of the being a specialist in communicating with people. It demonstrates an assertion of control, an awareness of how to respond and react to individuals, the need to assert control by gaining intelligence and understanding as to how they ticked. It also was described that he participated in actions against dissidents, which demonstrates an assertion of control and an absence of emotional empathy. Vladimir Yuselotsev Gortonov, who shared an office with Putin when the two were stationed in Dresden, East Germany, wrote in his 2003 memoir that Putin worked in Leningrad for the Fifth Directorate, which was the section of the KGB that combated ideological diversions. This suggests that Putin was of at least moderate to high cognitive function. It also demonstrates an absence of emotional empathy and the need to assert control. Volodya began his career in the most odious section of the KGB, the Fifth Directorate, Kruglov said. The heirs of that section are now in Centre E, the anti-extremism section of the Federal Security Service, FSB, the successor to the KGB, and are fabricating cases against fake counter-revolutionary organisations. According to Kruglov's research, Putin's main work for the KGB in the Leningrad years was recruiting foreigners who came to the Soviet Union and Soviet citizens who communicated with foreigners or were going abroad. Being able to recruit people suggests that there would be a degree of charm at operate, that would be operating, that there would be moderate to high cognitive function, an ability to understand the way that people functioned, demonstrative and assertion of control, and an absence of emotional empathy for them through the manipulation of them. Kruglov explained that this was a potent position for the eager young Putin. Working on foreigners often meant using criminal and antisocial elements, prostitutes of both sexes, money changers and hard currency speculators, he said. They worked with resellers of icons and antiques, with contrabandists, with anyone who could hook the foreigner in some way or provide information about him. Assertion of control, absence of emotional empathy, lack of boundary recognition, use of manipulations, lack of accountability for behaviours, high-handedness, dismissiveness. Working in this department was a good opportunity to meet people in the Soviet shadow economy and various criminal circles, he added. Residual benefit. When Pyotin was moved to Moscow in the mid-1990s, the connection there between the FSB and the Izmailovo criminal group was already solid, Kruglov said. At the time, the group was headed by Soviet Afghan war veteran Anton Malevsky, whom Kruglov describes as a confirmed racist who formed connections with acquaintances in the FSB to drive the Caucasian, particularly Chechen, criminal groups out of Moscow. In 1993, as part of his effort to weaken the former KGB, President Boris Yeltsin put the elite Vimpol Special Forces Unit under the Interior Ministry. Immediately, 600 well-trained special operating agents found themselves on the street, Kruglov said, noting that many of the elite KGB agents felt insulted at the prospect of being subordinated to the police. 
Malevsky found work for many of these unemployed people, Krogloff continued. Several security private firms were set up, which became joint enterprises of the Ismailovo gang and the FSB. When Portin became director of the FSB in 1998, he inherited all of this from his predecessors, Kruglov said. Only two months after assuming his post, Pyotin brought the Vimpol unit back under the FSB. The Ismavlo syndicate remains the most powerful criminal syndicate in Russia, Kruglov said, and is still connected with the FSB Special Operations Centre. This demonstrates character trait acquisition, the residual benefit of access to a particular power network. For 20 years, they have been receiving their dividends, he said, adding that while other mafia structures in Russia have suffered under Putin, the Ismavlo group has flourished. Suggestion of involvement with criminality, absence of emotional empathy, triangulation, residual benefits through money and access to power network, sense of entitlement, lack of accountability for ignoring the application of law to all. We have to look the truth in the eyes, Kruglov continued. Russia is run by a criminal security regime of the worst possible sort. They are soaked in blood, theft and crime, and they are all connected by a shared past. There is even a joke. The criminal band of the 1990s that seized power is now scaring everyone with the prospect of returning to the lawless 1990s. Use of threat, absence of emotional empathy, criminality. With Portin, you are looking at the fragmentation of his childhood and his background in the KGB. There was a lot of consternation about who his biological father was. He was bullied an awful lot at school and had a low stature. He was intelligent, but was bullied quite a lot in his early childhood. Moderate to high cognitive function, lack of control environment once again confirmed. His father was a metal worker, but he had an amazing respect for the old Soviet Union and communism and believed in the common people. This was Putin's political ideology, and he felt this was going to be his life, character trait acquisition. He was a loner as a child, and the way you survive when bullied for years is you become very aggressive, and so there is impulsivity and aggression as a child. Impulsivity, loner, victim mentality, uh, potential use of heated fury. He wanted to have power, and so he felt allegiance to the KGB, and becoming a KGB officer would be a way to demonstrate his feelings for the Russian ideology of communism. Exhibition of the need to assert control through power, character trait acquisition. Becoming a senior KGB officer would have given him a powerful nature of control. Here, you can see his genetics very much interacting with the Soviet ideology, and it was this that really began to anchor his identity as an aggressive leader who will fight to preserve Soviet ideology. Character trait acquisition. This identification with the Soviet Union, anchoring to it and utilising it is a theme that we will also be exploring in later parts as a consequence of essentially magical thinking and character trait acquisition. He wants to go back to those days and bring Russia back into the old Soviet economy. Aritom Kruglov's observations about Vladimir Putin provide us with numerous indicators which are beginning to create a picture. Once again, he has confirmed the formative environment in which Putin's defence mechanism was formed, with additional information demonstrating these further indicators as he moved through the ranks of the KGB and the individuals that he interacted with. In part three, we will now go and examine a raft of various examples of Vladimir Putin's behaviour drawn from a variety of sources to identify numerous indicators and what they tell us, and these are particularly insightful with regard to what he is. This is the end of part two. Join me in part three for further analysis.